And uh, with this, uh, we uh, come to the presentation of Ravi Kalkara. He is uh, really a leader in this uh, topic of uh, youth engagement. And uh, I would also encourage you to visit the homepage of the World Conference on Youth, uh, where the Colombo Declaration is on youth engagement in the post-2015 uh, agenda. It's a document only two days old. And there's really a lot of uh, important information and guidelines for the future of youth and sustainable development action. And uh, this uh, video message is uh, has been shown already before. So, uh, uh, this. Uh, Good morning. My name is Ravi Karpara, and I work with UN Habitat and UN Living Campaign, advising them on youth issues worldwide. And I'm based in New York office. I also co-chair the UN Interagency Network on Development Sub-Working Group on Youth Participation and Development of the Post-2015 Agenda. I'm here to speak about uh, the Youth 21 Initiative, initiative which is led by UN Habitat on really looking at UN architecture and youth engagement. I'm also going to talk about UN Millennium Campaign's flagship project on behalf of the UN system, which is My World Survey, uh, and how young people have engaged with and finally, I would also talk about the issues of young people using information communication technology for sustainable development and social transformation. A Youth 21 initiative, which started really inspired by the Agenda 21 document, really goes and looks into and investigates with how we in the UN system have been engaging with young people. Uh, for the first time, the League of Nations in 1936 called for a World Conference in Youth. And subsequently, we have seen world conferences and various opportunities in the 1940s, 50s, and so on, as it uh, goes on to 2011, the last high-level meeting. What comes out very interesting, if you look at the declarations coming down from 1936 to 2011, is a very interesting pattern, which is young people demanding that the UN system should really engage with young people, provide spaces and opportunities where they can voice their concerns, participate in decision-making processes, but most crucially really asking for opportunities where young people can offer their partnership, their positive civic engagement so that they can become actors in creating social transformation in the communities and in global processes. So U21 made a recommendation which was to appoint the Secretary General's uh, special representative on the world. And we worked with esteemed governments such as Norway, such as uh, Brazil, or Sri Lanka, UAE, and others, to really get their support, so that we really create this new mechanism. And I'm very, very glad to say that, and probably you've already heard, that we have now a Secretary General's N1 in London. We really commend uh, uh, the Secretary General for also prioritizing the youth in second term priority. And becoming the first Secretary General, really to say that we need to step up and really work with young people. And similarly, you must have heard already that we were also working in the UN system on the system wide action plan. I'm here to also speak about the second recommendation which comes out of the Youth 21 initiative, which is also to create a UN permanent forum in youth. This is still a discussion, it's not no concrete agenda has really been set. But there's a momentum out there saying that, you know, how do we really create permanent structures and mechanisms where young people going from one meeting to the other, one conference to the other, can really bring and coordinate and consolidate the discussion on young people's issues, as highlighted in the World Program for Action. The attempt is to create national level uh, a platform assemblies, regional platform assemblies, and global youth permanent forum. And the advocacy continues. I would also like to highlight, as many of you know, that for the last two years, UN system has been really working on promoting young people's participation in the post-2015 development agenda. Over 88 national consultations, 11 primary consultations, four high-level panel meetings were conducted, and we saw extensive involvement of young people. Young women, young men participated widely. But also a similar project that came through was the online mobilization, which UN Millennium Campaign has been doing on behalf of the world system, it is the My World 2015 Global Survey. The survey is really a simple tool to go out there and ask people that how can you prioritize when the governments are really sitting in 2015 and saying that what are the global priorities after ending 
And I would really invite all of you to take it. It's myworld2015.org. But if you start looking at the data analytics which is coming out of this, and I'm sure my colleague Nero from Brocha will show you the infographics. You'll see that if you look at the age cohort of 16 to 30, and I must say that out of 1.3 million, 900,000 are below the age of 30 who are taking the survey. And out of that, about 700,000 are in the age group of 16 to 30, and their priorities are education, education, education. No surprise, a demand for knowledge, a demand for competency and skill based education system that can create uh, employ employment and entrepreneurship and really uh, contribute to sustainable development values. The second priority is, th uh, is uh, health, third being job opportunities, fourth, which is very interesting, is asking for accountability, which is honest and responsive governments. Fifth, on protection from crime of violence, sixth being gender equality. And seventh, issues of climate change, whether it's water, forest, uh, rivers, uh, and climate change uh, specifically. We see a very clear emergence of this global community of young people who are really more connected to issues of sustainable development as highlighted in Agenda 21 and what came out of New York 20. But also there's a worry because we have not really created those opportunities. We haven't created that aid architecture we can really invest in young people. And that's what the Youth 21 initiative, the third component of the Youth 21 initiative is also rethinking the global aid architecture and really trying to question where is youth investments being made. And we're also working on the global aid architecture discussion, which I will be happy to speak at a later point. Uh, finally, I think uh, one thing which came as a big learning from the My World survey was this very strong engagement of young people. The, the number I talked about, 700,000, young people participate as individual participant, individual voter. They mobilize their networks, their, their youth-led organization, their, uh, you know, their universities or their uh, you know, a rural community or rural groups. And they came and participated. The third thing which happened with young people was they didn't just limit for their participation. They went and mobilized votes of women out there, uh, indigenous communities, disability communities, and so on and so forth. We have images of young people having and conducting a vote in a rural area. Uh, a 17 year old young woman sitting and having a discussion with an 85 year old uh, old woman and asking her what her priorities are. So what we're really seeing is also a strong demand for a global void, which I really request uh, the government of Austria to consider filling. That where is the global discussion on how do we continuously engage with young people through information communication technology? linking that to sustainable development, and more importantly, to social action and social transformation. Now, of course, really want to congratulate the government of Austria and the Austrian people for really selecting uh, and voting for this dynamic 27-year-old uh, youth minister uh, who is now your foreign minister. And that really speaks a lot about uh, a, a government and people. And really, we want to see more young, value-based leadership out there in political system, economic system, social system, civil system, and of course, in academia. And I would really urge the uh, government of Austria uh, with Glocha to really create a global uh, hub where we can really bring together uh, young people who are sensitive, who really want to take on a fusion between ICT, uh, sustainable development, and social transformation as we move on to the next uh, set of the global development agenda. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. And I'm very, very glad uh, my colleague, uh, Miro, uh, has invited me to speak. And we in the Habitat will be very happy to engage and look for partnerships. And we really call upon our colleagues out there, our academics colleagues, to really take on the My World Survey, take it to the universities and other platforms so that we can do more and more voices. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And I look forward to this continued discussion and most importantly, a continued partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ravi. Uh, could you please uh, find the My World 2015 survey that uh, can show it to you also? So, uh, what we've heard from Ravi is very important for several reasons. One is uh, this uh, My World survey, as you have heard, there have been uh, now already uh, 2 million uh, people interviewed what uh, their priorities are, 1.3 uh, 
million of them are young people and uh, the priority as they are straight stating that uh, they are uh, key uh, and if you go here a little bit down the, 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 that's it here it is this is my world uh, the united nations global survey for a better world that uh, you should also participate there and really state your preferences and if uh, you and ODC wants to connect with this crime prevention work uh, with young people, uh, it needs first to listen also what the topics, uh, the themes of young people are. And uh, this uh, My World uh, survey can be an orientation for this. And uh, this uh, video message of Ravi was also important for another reason. Uh, it is uh, to show you that what we are doing here with IAI Glotcher is very much uh, connected with the most important uh, global sustainable development uh, movements, uh, this survey and the UN Habitat and the World Conference on Youth. So it's really quite strong and uh, we want it to connect it also with this Vienna-based uh, organizations and we also uh, are looking for social impact investors because uh, uh, we are reaching our limits of capacities uh, sooner or later as a civil society organization and uh, with such activities like mm -hmm. music and sports for development we are quite uh, optimistic that uh, there will be a case for social impact investors to join our work and we are delighted to have a very good partner for this, uh, our activities. It's Michael Platzer and the Academic Council of the United Nations system. Actually, it was uh, Michael's initiative to invite us uh, to contribute to this uh, commission uh, on crime prevention session here and uh, to look for potentials to work together regarding the Congress in Qatar next year. And uh, Michael, I give you the floor. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And what makes me happy this morning is that more than half of our audience, I think, is under 30. Is that correct? It looks like. It. And I expect those people to uh, contribute to a conversation. I think this should not be just uh, two old men talking to you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I'm hoping it will be an interaction. Yes, uh, UNODC. Uh, Mohamed Al Muna, who's hiding back there, uh, uh, has had a very active program of sports, not drugs, uh, and particularly uh, Qatar has been uh, in the forefront of this, these activities. I ran a program in the Caribbean, um, and music, of course, there's the great um, reggae stars, and uh, but also cricketers who are role models for young people. Um, these have been evaluated. Um, unfortunately, one of our panelists who went actually to, to Hollywood to learn about how to uh, inspire people and get uh, movie stars and uh, musicians and sports people to uh, be um, advocates for the program. Um, we're positively evaluated, but I have my own skepticism about this. Um, you know, people talk about uh, Facebook activism. It's as if, uh, you know, you click something, you join a petition, and you've solved the problem, rarely. Um, and the other, of course, is that uh, there, there are professional youth. There are professional youth delegates who go from one meeting to the next, and because they've been at one meeting, they get selected to go to the next one. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's also very helpful. Um, I have had some experience with my own young people, scholars, with the Akun people. I think it makes, needs a group dynamic. It needs people who want to be together, who are feeling comfortable with each other, who, uh, who party together, who uh, become um, active and try to do something. Now, Miro and I have been together a long time. And there's an Article 29 at the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, which requires people to go do something. And that means uh, whether you go and uh, advocate for uh, whatever you want to do, uh, the environment, the seals, the, uh, visiting the elderly, um, uh, even if you advocate for legalization of marijuana, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, but my point is, get involved. 
and I think getting involved means usually forming a group which is um, self-sustaining. Uh, they want to do something and they get moderate successes. I think it's fantastic not only that we have a young foreign minister of 27 years old. In Austria we can vote at 16 and yet most people don't vote at 16. Uh, I think we need to involve them. We do have a very um, special uh, event coming up next year in Qatar. Um, there will be a youth forum in Qatar. Uh, we are trying to expand it in, in some ways to get more international people there, but also have some kind of web links around the world where people might be able to interact. Uh, Miro has, a, has had success in launching several uh, music uh, contests. We now want to have some kind of sports contests as well, combined with music. Combined with music, so double whammy. Um, I think we we we'd like your ideas how we can help uh, not only that process but also doing these kind of things now and expanding them at a local level. It doesn't all need to lead to Doha. You can do something that works in your community. Um, as I say, there are I've participated in I think three fundraisers this week of young people organizing themselves and uh, having a uh, donation for, for the refugees, uh, for other causes. Um, youth have used very modest means to contribute to society and I think that's the solution. But again, uh, I think we've probably spent half the time already talking. So we have a, a, about 15 more minutes, and I would like some react for 20 minutes, but we have a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. And I would like to invite you to, to say something, and I hope that the under 30 crowd would speak first. Uh, if we could uh, briefly uh, go the to the table, so everybody could say uh, name, institution, and why the topic is interesting for him or her. Across the table. 